After the massacre in El Paso yesterday, authorities are investigating a potential nexus to terrorism, looking at a document posted online and believed to have been written by the suspected terrorist in El Paso, a document filled with white nationalist language and racist hatred towards immigrants and Latinos specifically. Now I want to bring in the former HUD secretary and the former mayor of San Antonio and the only Latino in the 2020 presidential field. Uh, joining me now, presidential candidate, Secretary Julian Castro. Um, Secretary Castro, thanks for joining us on this horrible morning. Uh, tell us how you reacted when you learned about these horrific mass murders. I think like all other Americans, they're heartbroken. Uh, I have a family. I can only imagine what the families in El Paso and in Dayton this morning are going through. And I also think, like many people, um, it is infuriating to see another two mass shootings when we average a mass shooting a day now in the United States and we know what we need to do to change as a country. Uh, I think I have both of those feelings this morning. Well, what, what do we need to do to change as a country? What can be done to, if not stop this, at least curtail it? We need to do a whole slew of things, uh, from ensuring that we have universal background checks to limiting the capacity of magazines, uh, to ensuring that we have red flag laws out there that are able to catch uh, individuals who may represent a danger to themselves or to other people. We also need a renewed assault weapons ban so that these semi-automatic weapons, uh, these weapons of war, are not out there on the streets. Uh, you know, and most Americans, I believe, support these kinds of measures, but because of the inaction of Congress, of politicians who listen to special interests instead of listening to the American people, we haven't made the progress that we should. Let's talk about the El Paso shooting in your home state. Law enforcement officials are right now investigating a document that they believe was written by the alleged shooter, the alleged terrorist, and this document is filled with white nationalist and racist hatred towards immigrants, specifically Hispanics. You would be the first Latino man ever elected president. I don't know if you read the document or have read about it, but I'm wondering what your reaction is. Just, uh, I did have a chance to, to read through um, the manifesto. And I mean, this is something that uh, represents the complete opposite of the country that I know and the state of Texas that I know. What's special about a place like El Paso and a city like San Antonio that I'm from are that now for generations, it has been a bicultural place where people of different backgrounds get along. Uh, they go to church together. Uh, they go to school together. They live near one another. Uh, you know, there is a lot of, um, you know, camaraderie, a sense of community. It's so different from the picture that that, that shooter was, was painting of what we can become in the United States. And uh, I know that his dark heart does not reflect what's in the hearts of the vast majority of Americans, no matter what their background is. And this is another example of the hate, the bigotry that we have to reject it also points to the fact that we need leadership at every level in our public and private life that is encouraging people to understand each other, to have compassion and respect for one another, and to appreciate our differences instead of to fuel bigotry and hate and division. Your um, campaign rival and fellow Texan, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, said, quote, President Trump's racism does not just offend our sensibilities, it fundamentally changes the character of this country and it leads to violence. Uh, you haven't gone that far this morning. Uh, do you think that Congressman O'Rourke is saying something that's unfair? Do you see any sort of link between the comments the president makes and this kind of violence? What do you think? Well, I believe that President Trump is making it worse. Look. Uh uh, you know, the person that is responsible for this shooting is the shooter. At the same time, if you're in a position of leadership, you set the tone for the country. And there's no question that this president 
is setting a tone of division and fanning the flames of bigotry and of hate. And you know, he's not making it any better, he's making it worse. And so uh, I do believe that President Trump himself, I hope that personally the events of the last 24 hours will cause him to reflect on the kind of president that he has been and what he wants for this country so that as he goes forward, uh, he can try and unify the country more than he has. Uh, sometimes for some people, and I believe this goes for the president, division is a political strategy. Bigotry is a way of stirring some people up so that they'll vote for you. That's dangerous. President Trump condemned the shooting in El Paso. He called it a, quote, hateful act and an act of cowardice. Um, what's your response to that? Is that enough? The president needs to be quicker um, in the future to routinely condemn the type of hate that we see in this country and to refrain from stirring up that kind of bigotry, whether it's at those rallies uh, or after what happened in Charlottesville. You know, this president has been um, terrible when it comes to trying to bring us together as Americans. Four of the 10 deadliest mass shootings in modern American history took place in your home state of Texas. Um, 26 people were killed at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs in 2017. 23 killed at Luby's Cafeteria in 1991, 18 killed at the University of Texas in 1966, now 20 people killed in El Paso. What do you make of that fact that almost half of the most deadly shootings in the United States in modern American history ha have happened in your home state of Texas? The NRA for years has said that the answer to these mass shootings is more guns, that a good guy with a gun is the answer. But I'll tell you, Jake, think about this, and I hope that your viewers will think about this. We're in Texas. Uh, that shooter went into a situation where people routinely carry guns. Concealed carry is allowed here. Open carry is allowed here. Campus carry is allowed here. He knew that if he was going into a Walmart with one or 2,000 people in it. Certainly people are packing. That didn't deter him. That didn't deter him at all. And it didn't keep those people safe. Your fellow um, presidential candidate, Cory Booker, suggested that even 2020 candidates who don't support his gun licensing plan, requiring every gun owner in America to get a license the same way uh, drivers would get a driver's license, that if you don't support it, you're part of the problem. Do you support gun licensing? And if not, how do you respond to Senator Booker? I do think that we have to strengthen our laws when it comes to knowing who has these guns, uh, when they're sold, who do they change hands into? And so, you know, I think that Cory Booker uh, has a good point about having more information about who has these guns. But we also have to combine that with uh, things like red flag laws that give courts the ability to take guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them in the first place, uh, people who represent a danger to themselves or to somebody else. Secretary Castro, thanks so much for joining us today on this horrible Sunday. Uh, we appreciate your time, sir. Thank you.